सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली इन दिस एपिसोड ऑफ कट द्लटर आई टेक द लिबर्टी ऑफ टेकिंग बैक टू स्टोरी दैट ऑल ऑफ अस सीम टू हैव फॉरगॉटन व्हिच इज ट्रेजिक द स्टोरी ऑफ मणिपुर यूजुअली यू वुड फाइंड Cut the clutter talks about what's on top of our mind today, and what has new complexities, new complex complexities which haven't been talked about. So, one, the Manipur story does not have new complexities; it has old complexities, and the tragedy is that nobody is addressing the old complexities. We've now we've now decided to just move on. When I say we, we mean the government. It means central government, state government. the media most of all including the opposition people get tired of a story so after after manipur we got back to domestic politics oncoming elections then gaza hamas etc etc and we forgotten india's biggest internal security threat in a very long time in the state of manipur that is the reason the reason i'm picking up this subject for today's cut the clutter also is that that sometimes it is important to make sure we don't forget the most important stories of our times and the most consequential stories of our times because manipur the fish always rots at the top so a country also if it begins to fall apart that happens that happens at the peripheries and manipur is a very distant periphery it's it is as distant a part of india's periphery as possible in fact if anything jammu and kashmir mere is much closer physically emotionally and also logistically and politically than manipur is so this is among the remotest remotest parts of the country and that's the reason this is also an unusual episode of katta clutter because this will have a fair bit of opinion i am i am warning you early enough so you might say that this is my bhadas episode of ctc or this is my rant episode of ctc जिसमें मैं शिकायत कर रहा हूँ जिसमें मैं भड़ास निकाल रहा हूँ थोड़ा बहुत वो भी है देर इज ए लिटिल बिट ऑफ दैट देयर बट दिस इज ऑल्सो अंडर लाइनिंग अ बिग थ्रेट ए फेस्टरिंग प्रॉब्लम एंड सम न्यू डिवेलपमेंट देयर सो द न्यू डिवेलपमेंट इन मणिपुर इज दैट मोहन टॉम्बिंग मोहन टॉम्बिंग इज जनरल सेक्रेटरी ऑफ आई टी एल एफ आई टी एल एफ इज इंडिजिनस ट्राइबल लीडर्स फोरम बेसिकली इट्स एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ कुकीज ओ पीपल कुक द टू द टू एंटेगनिस्ट इन मणिपुर एज वी नो एथनिक एंटेगनिस्ट आर द कुकीज ओ पीपल यूजली दे आर कॉल कुकीज बट कुकी जो जो कम्स फ्रॉम मिजो बिकॉज मिजोराम इज इन द नेबरहुड एंड एथनिसिटी इज अ वेरी कॉमन सो कुकी जो पीपल इन द हिल्स मोस्टली चुरा चांदपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड मेथी पीपल इन द वैली मेथी पीपल आर ए लॉट मोर न्यूमरस दे आर जस्ट ओवर ओवर दे आर जस्ट ओवर फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ ऑल ऑफ मणिपुर पॉपुलेशन द कुकी जो पीपल आर जस्ट अबाउट फोर्टीन percent this hostility has gone on for quite some time and we've seen quite a bit of violence and deaths and destruction in the process now the latest development is that muan tombing the general secretary of itlf itlf is an organization that or like an umbrella organization that cookies of people have formed everybody is armed in manipur now the cookies zo groups are fully armed and methi people are not just fully armed but actually much better armed because they have happily merrily quote and quote looted the most modern weapons including rocket launchers mortars etc from the manipur police and manipur armed police stations and armories i i put looted in quotes because it looks like more than more than in any looting this was like a friendly handover because in no place did police resist fire back because if the police fires back then any mob which has come with the intention of losing arms will at least suffer some damage no such thing has happened so we've spoken about this multiple times before and but it's quite evident and there's been a lot of data coming out that the police in imphal valley predominantly methi colluded i i'm not even using the word allegedly they colluded because without such collusion so much weaponry could not have been looted now the fact is that after that the government and the police the center has sent its advisers to manipur 
A lot of effort is being made. Appeals are being issued to people who've taken these weapons to surrender these. But how much has been surrendered? Not even a few percent. So, so the two sides in Manipur are fully armed now. The role of the paramilitary forces, even the army, is basically to keep the two sides separate from each other. Because if they, if one comes across the other, it leads to violence. And I will tell you about some developments there also. So Mohan Tombing has said, Mohan Tombing has said that if our main demands are not met by the central government, I'm not listing all the demands, the main demand. He says the main demand, which is an autonomous administration for the hill districts. If that is not met within two weeks, then ITLF will announce self-government in our districts, two districts. Now, self-government in two districts, think about it. A tribal community, a very distinct ethnicity is saying that unless you accept my demands for autonomy, for autonomous administration, they are not saying autonomous from India. They are saying autonomous from the state government in Imphal that we don't trust and that, that, and that we see as being run by Metis with whom we are at odds. If that demand is not met, we will declare self-governance in our districts. That essentially amounts to the secession of these two districts, not from India. They are not declaring another republic, but secession from the Indian system and a clear expression of no confidence in the might and the respect and the clout and the stature of government of India. That is a very major threat and something to worry about. Now just think about it. Suppose, suppose insurgents or some insurgent group in Kashmir Valley had said that look if these four demands are not met by such and such day then these four districts of Kashmir Valley will, will declare self-governance. If, if that had happened all your TV channels would have gone berserk and immediately government of India would be then pumping in army, navy, air force, everything. I'm saying this rhetorically. Obviously, no navy will go there or, and no air force will carry out operations. I'm only saying it somewhat rhetorically that if such a threat came up, say in Kashmir Valley, then all of the might of government of India will be employed to counter it. The reason I'm using that comparison is to raise a question in our minds that isn't Manipur as much a part of India as Kashmir is, then how come we respond with such alarm and alacrity when it comes to any such threat in Kashmir, but we are so, so nonchalant and so lazy and so chilled out when something is happening in Manipur, whereas what's happening in Manipur has much more popular support and also Manipur itself is a very different situation from anything that we Indian state that our country has faced so far by way of separatism because what we are seeing in Manipur right now is not your classical separatism, not classical separatist insurgency where a group picks up arms and says, I don't want my region to be a part of India and I want a separate republic of my own or kingdom of my own or maybe a revolutionary state of my own. What is happening in Manipur now is that there is two separate groups. They are not fighting the Indian state. They are fighting each other. They are fighting each other with the kind of weapons which insurgents in India have rarely had. They are fighting with weapons both in quality and in numbers that insurgents in India have rarely had. In Kashmir, at the worst of times, the insurgents, terrorists, militants, whatever you call them, or maybe all of them together in all categories, whoever they are, they never had more than maybe a thousand, couple of thousand, maybe 2,500 automatic weapons. In Manipur, in tiny Manipur at this point, at least 10,000 automatic weapons with millions of rounds of cartridges. At least 10,000, but possibly by my estimation, about 15 to 18,000, if not more, automatic weapons are with these militias that are under nobody's control. And they also have rocket launchers. RPGs, mortars, all kinds of things. The difference between the Kashmir situation and Manipur situation also is that in Manipur, when people have weapons, they display weapons, or when you know, when the government knows that somebody has illegal weapons, those fellows are raided, those fellows are raided and usually, usually arrested or killed. In fact, in most cases, they are not arrested, they are killed. In Manipur, government forces are not even carrying out any raids, ambushes, searches, nothing, because this is an armed anarchy which has been allowed to prevail. So for the moment, stay with me and transport your mind 
to Manipur. Forget Gaza. Once again, because this is a very opinionated episode of Karta Clutter, I will also raise a question. Think of all the left liberal community in India, particularly the left community in India. And they are so outraged by what they see Israel is doing in Gaza. The fact, however, is that most of these people have not said anything about Manipur for maybe a month, maybe a month and a half. Not even, it's not even as if they got distracted because of Gaza, because of the Hamas attacks on October 7. They've been, they've been distracted from the Manipur story for a very long time. So this is my humble effort to bring focus back to a problem that exists in India and that threatens India's integrity. Just by treating it as out of sight, out of mind, this will not go away. So the same Indian liberal left community, which has such concerns about Gaza and such anger about Gaza, if they had continued on with showing at least 20%, one-fifth of the same concern and the sense of urgency about Manipur, which involves our own citizen. Maybe in that case, there would have been more pressure on the government to act in Manipur, to do something decisive, instead of treating it with benign neglect, which is the case right now. Now there's this threat by Mohan Tombing, General Secretary of ITLF, of bringing in self-government gov gov within two weeks. We don't know what the government will do. What the government has done is a routine thing, meanwhile. The routine thing is that they have now renewed the ban on a whole bunch of organizations. These, again, underline another factor. Nine organizations on which central government has imposed a ban for five years. In fact, all of the media reported that has imposed the ban. The fact is that the government has only extended the ban. Most of these organizations have been banned for a very long time. All of these organizations, all nine of these organizations, I will give you a little list. PLA, People's Liberation Army. RPF, that is Revolutionary People's Front, which is the political front of PLA, United National Liberation Front of Manipur, Prepak, that is People's Revolutionary Party of Kangle Park, KCP, Kangle Park Communist Party, and Kangle, Yaol, Kanba, Lop. I will give you some descriptions in a minute. Then an organization called Coordination Committee, just called Coordination Committee or CORCOM, and the Alliance for Socialist Unity of Kangli Park. All of these have been further banned for five years for, and I, I'm quoting from the government press release, secessionist, subversive, terrorist, violent activities in collusion with forces inimical to sovereignty and integrity of India. Then again, the government notification says, if not immediately controlled, these could indulge, and I'm quoting from the notification, these could indulge in killings of civilians and targeting police and security personnel, procurement and induction of illegal arms and ammunition from across international border and extortion of huge funds. Now, all these nine groups, this is very important to note, all these nine groups are separatist groups. All these nine groups are Imphal Valley-based Methi groups. They are not Kuki tribal groups. Kuki tribals have been fighting. In fact, they've been fighting. They've been heavily armed. They've got weapons from across the border, across, across the border being, being from Myanmar. And they have signed a suspension of operations agreement with the central government in 2008, which means they've been fighting for longer. Their fight, however, is not about a Kuki state independent of India. Their fight is about an autonomous Kuki territory not in the control of the state government in Manipur. To that extent, it is not very different from the earlier Gurkha land movement that Subhash Gishing had launched in Darjeeling area. He wanted autonomy. He wanted autonomy from West Bengal, from Kolkata. Finally, he got his aut autonomous districts and an autonomous council and there's been, there's been peace there since then. Now that we are talking about Manipur, I will also tell you a little bit about this organization on whom this ban has been extended. So RPF, RPF which is Revolutionary People's Front, this was formed a year after PLA. PLA was founded by Namir Akpam Bisheshwar Singh who was captured. I've told you that story before. He was captured after an encounter with the army, then spent some time in jail, finally was freed, became a free man. So PLA is among the oldest separatist organizations, insurgent organizations in the state. In 1990, then it went through many divisions 
and many new groups were formed out of it. In 1990, it had a bit of a revival where it enforced, it ordered prohibition, ordered all liquor shops to be shut down, not very different from what insurgents did or terrorists did in Kashmir Valley. So they, they ordered a complete shutdown of all liquor shops and and a prohibition enforced at the point of the gun. Then they started shooting rape accused and also apparently they claimed they were launching a campaign against drug addiction. Prey Park came up around the same time. It was founded 1977 by a man called R.K. R.K. Faraj Kumar, R.K. Tula Chandra, who was subsequently killed in a 1986 encounter. And many other organizations, even among the nine that you see listed, are offshoots of it because this kept on breaking up just as the PLA kept on breaking up under different leaders. The oldest organization among those whose ban has been extended by five more years the oldest organization is UNLF, that is the United National Liberation Front of Manipur. That was formed in 1964 by a man called Sana Yaima, who was the president. Since then, again, it has gone through many, many splits and many reunifications and splits and reunification. Its most prominent recent leader, Sana Yaima, is not like a nom de guerre or a name specially given to a fighter, to an honored fighter. Sana Yaima generally means a son of the soil or son of the land. His name is Rajkumar Meghan. Rajkumar Meghan had gone away. He had gone into exile in Bangladesh. Then he got too much in Bangladesh with the, with the rise of the Hasina government there because they started catching Indian insurgents and handing them over to India. Then he tried to go to Myanmar, etc. Finally, he was arrested in 2010. The Indian government story or the NIA story was that he was arrested from Bihar, but possibly that's where they showed that arrest. And he had actually been caught by the Bangladesh authorities and handed over to India. He was given a 10-year jail sentence from which he got a 10-month remission because of good conduct in jail. He was released in 2019. Initially, NIA did not want him to leave Guwahati and go back to Imphal, but he promised he gave a promise of good conduct, so he was allowed to come back to Imphal in 2019. He's living quietly there with his family. Why is all of this important? It's also important because it's not as if peace has suddenly descended on Manipur. You are all curious people, so I'm sure you will ask me, what is this Kangli Park? Kangli Park Communist Party, People's Revolutionary Party of Kangli Park. So Kangli Park was the ancient, the older name of Manipur. Manipur acquired its current name Manipur quite recently. It was called Kangli Park. Now Kangli Park literally, literally means dry area. And the story goes that there was a time when all of Manipur Valley was flooded. It was flooded by, by the waters of what is called Loktak Lake. Loktak is among the world's largest lakes of its kind. It's a big wet zone. So the story goes that there was a time when all of Imphal Valley was flooded and then some rulers cut the mountains to let the water leave and then it is in that swamp that the Manipuri civilization and Manipuri people grew. As the water was taken out, what emerged? What emerged was dry land. That's why the name Kang Lepak. So Kang in Manipuri means dry and Lepak means land. That's why Kang Lepak. These insurgent groups therefore want a return to the pre-Manipur era in their valley. And also you will ask me, what is this organization KYKL that we keep mentioning? So KYKL is Kanglei Yavol Kanna Lup. Kanglei Yavol Kanna Lup. What it means is organization to save the revolutionary movement in Manipur, which obviously is what they refer to as Kanglei. Two things before I let you go. One, even lately, violent incidents are taking place in Manipur. It's just that they've gotten off the front pages. And in any case, primetime doesn't bother about them. What primetime bothers about and does not bother about is another debate altogether. Just today, that is November 16, a patrol of Assam rifles was hit by an IED explosion. Improvised explosive device explosion. Fortunately, fortunately, nobody was hurt and there was some exchange of fire with insurgents in Tegnupal district, place called Saibol in Tegnupal district. They were riding a Casper mine resistant vehicle, which might have helped prevent injuries in this case. Exactly one week back, four cookie civilians 
family members of an army soldier. They were pulled out of a car in police presence in the valley when they were coming in from Chura Chandpur to Imphal because after all the airport is at Imphal. The access into Manipur and out of Manipur is through Imphal. So if people, tribal people from Chura Chandpur and other districts have to go out, particularly if they have to take a flight, they have to come to Imphal. So these four people were pulled out of their car and kidnapped and taken away while the police watched. The very next day, November 9, bullet-ridden bodies of two were found and the remaining two are missing. Again, on 31st of October, 31st of October, a Manipur police officer, Chingtham Anand Kumar, was just going about his normal duties in Tengdupal district, where he was shot by a sniper, in this case, evidently by a cookie sniper. Both sides are fully armed. Both sides are doing their stuff. Meanwhile, there are disturbing signs that some insurgent activity has revived this year in the valley for many years, for five years, five preceding years, five years before 2023, not one death had taken place because of an insurgency in the valley. But this year, 139 insurgency related deaths, killings have been reported. And this is besides this cookie, 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 methi riots and killings. This is besides this. So 139 insurgency related deaths, fatalities have been reported. And I'm quoting data from South Asia terrorism portal. 68 of these are civilians, 54 insurgents, 16 security forces personnel, and one unspecified. That is 139. And as I told you earlier, in the five years preceding 2023, there had not been even one insurgency related fatality in Manipur. This level of fatalities have not been seen since the pre-2010 era. So you see everywhere there are disturbing signs and you see everywhere there is also evidence that we are not bothered about Manipur. That's the reason I thought I will talk about this today, give you some facts also tell you about some complexities and at the same time wrap it in a fair bit of opinion which is uncharacteristic of cut the clutter. So we break that rule. And the good news is that Ananya Bhardwaj, our senior associate editor who you know well, she's featured, she's featured on cut the clutter more than once, once talking about these groups in Canada and Punjab, this terrorist slash gangster groups in Canada and Punjab, also talking about, talking about her Manipur coverage. She's won the Danish Siddiqui Award for her Manipur coverage. That award was presented this evening. You will see some pictures on your screen. And I will also share with you with the description a story that we have done on the award function today. It's also a reminder that the print tracks very closely on the ground developments that are important for our country in the most distant and difficult parts of our country.